Okay, so I think there's something to be said for going into this movie completely cold and not knowing anything about it. So this is going to be my last appeal to not watch any kind of review and just go watch the movie for yourself. Because what I'm going to say, it's not a spoiler in the technical sense, but I do think it may limit just the holy F moment at the end that, you know, I was lucky enough to have because I went completely cold. I think everyone else should have it too, so that's my last warning, but now I'm going to start the review. Okay, so I'm going to give a quick one sentence description of the movie, not talking about any specifics. Basically, first hour or so, it's a generic thriller that's hitting all those thriller elements that make up a good thriller, but it's not really doing anything new, and it's hitting those beats and those elements slower than most other thrillers that you've seen. So initially, you're probably not going to be too blown away by this. You're going to think it's a very average to mediocre thriller, and you might stop watching, and you might stop paying attention, you might give up on it, but if you stick with it, at some point there's a moment that things kick into high gear towards the end and that last 20 to 30 minutes is one of the most gut-wrenching, brutal last 20 to 30 minutes of any movie, any horror movie, any movie at all. I can't overstress that enough how much that last 20, 30 minutes hits you and I think part of that is because it had such a slow, um, slow, mild buildup so I can't even criticize and say, oh, the movie should have been like faster or should have gotten to that point later because I think the fact that it took the time and it was patient to get there, it just made that last part hit even harder. So the premise, and this is where I talk about it, just ticking off all those thriller boxes, the father dies, and the mother and the son, they go off to the secluded area to deal with their grief. There's a creepy neighbor who says kind of cryptic weird things to welcome them. There's a creepy passageway in the basement. He goes and explores it while suspenseful music plays. There's a uh, um, someone else in the town who starts being flirtatious with the mother. You're not really sure of his intentions. Weird things start happening around the house, just doors start slamming. So basically that's a setup for almost any good thriller. And I love these type of haunted house thrillers where you go back and forth debating whether or not all the weird things that are happening are supernatural or it's just there's an ordinary explanation. And this movie does a great job making you flip back and forth. There's a sequence where he sees the seems like the ghost of his father and his throat's all slit. But then he wakes up and it was just a dream. So you go back and forth thinking, oh, there's this father. It's definitely supernatural. Oh, no, it was all a dream. No, it's normal. Or is it? And you just keep going back and forth the whole movie. And for the most part, the movie's generic. But there are some unique little touches I liked. Um, in one of the final sequences, rather than just the typical suspenseful violin music that we always hear, there's this weird upbeat song that completely clashes which was what, with uh, what's going on in the scene. And I really like that touch. I don't know if you can say it's original. A lot of movies have done that now, kind of having the music where it clashes with what's actually going on. But at least they're trying something different. And it was a good song choice they picked. And speaking of the ending, like I say, that last 20, 30 minute sequence makes a whole movie worthwhile. Definitely worth a watch. I'm going to talk about spoilers now. So if you haven't watched it, stop watching. That last where he's breaking the mom's fingers and it's just so unexplainable. Just the brutality. Like, why is he doing this to her? And you never really find out. And then when he takes the kid's contacts out of his eyes, one, it's just so unsettling him being that close to his eyes, just taking the contacts out. And then the kid, he's limping and he, his blurry vision, he can't see. God, it, it was already horrifying at that point. And then it adds this guy's menacing standing over him and he can't see him through his blurry eyesight. It was just horrifying. And I've never seen that someone taking out someone someone's contacts before um, a killer doing that. It was very interesting. And then... I'm going to try to explain my interpretation of the ending because I'm not sure if I got it right, but I think I got it right. So the creepy neighbor who says her husband's dead and then says he's not dead and goes back and forth and everyone else, including the police, seems to think her husband's dead. Seems like her husband faked his own death and now sneaks into open houses and then stays in the house somewhere, doesn't leave, and then terrorizes the family by just moving stuff and kind of escalating and getting them to suspect each other. You see the mom and the son, they begin to think, or the mom at least thinks the son's just messing with him. So he kind of gets off on just pranking and like kind of terrorizing this family. And eventually it escalates into him, him actually killing the family. And then what he can do is he can just go to another house and do the same thing with another family. And you see that at the end of the movie of the cycle continuing. And what's ingenious is if you wanted to be this kind of serial killer and the serial murderer, in some sense, faking your own death is the best way to do it because then you're not really going to be a suspect in future murders. Like no one's going to expect a dead man is coming back from the grave to kill people. So it's kind of an interesting twist. Again, the movie was slightly ambiguous. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're trying to convey, but that was my interpretation at least.